Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. This is going to be part two of the Emerson EC-133. And in the previous video, we identified some capacitors that were defective in the power supply. This guy down in here, which I've changed. This guy here. This one in the back. Over here. Uh, and there's also a lot more work that needs to be done on this board. But the remaining failure on this set is that there's no color. Well, I mean, the burst signal is there because we get colored rainbows on the screen, but there's no actual, uh, no color sync there. So, what I'm, my suspicion, although yet unconfirmed, is that back there, see that 3.579545 megahertz crystal? That's your 3.58 uh, oscillator. And what we want to do is see if that's the reason why things aren't working. There's also a trimmer capacitor there, this uh, this green thing over here. I don't know if you can see it without light. Let's see if we can shed some light on it. That guy there, he may be defective. That's just your frequency trimmer. Uh, still a lot of dirt and gunk in this chassis. But we also have to figure that the board still needs to be largely resoldered. And a lot of uh, other things need to be checked in that circuit. For example, I have not yet checked the power supply capacitor for that circuit, which is this guy, probably near dead. There's also a buffer capacitor sitting at the front end of that jungle I see there, the UPC 1371C. That could be defective, or it could be a loose connection, although wrapping on it doesn't seem to change it at all. So, uh, I do need to take some wire dress loose so we can get the board up because uh, I really want it in a better service position than just putting the thing on its face. So, let's get to that and then we'll take some measurements and take a look at the board. Alright, so here's the board up and I've marked in red here the areas of uh, the capacitors of concern for the circuitry. Um, here's your IC, your crystal the frequency trimmer on the crystal, uh, those type of variable capacitors are known to go bad, so that may be a problem. We still need to touch up a lot on this board. Just kind of looking at it at an angle, uh, you can definitely tell there are still some questionable connections, especially that guy there. I don't know what he is, I think he's just a connector for something. Yeah, we've got him, and we've still got some stuff in the power supply here and over here to touch up. We just kind of did the bare minimum to see if the set would run. Uh, they didn't solder that, but that doesn't go anywhere, so not really a big deal. So let's get out the meter and see what those capacitors check as. And see if they're, uh, they're the reason why we have no color, though I'm more suspicious of the trimmer cap than anything. And it's not often that the little 3.58 crystal goes bad. I mean, it can. And then there's also this corrosive glue here, which does become conductive, uh, which they have adhering this clear sleeve to hold the jumper down. So these, this needs to be cleared away too. Uh, they had no idea that that would become caustic or conductive when it got older. So anyway, on to checking things. All right, so nominally, when I check these guys here, they don't show any signs of death. Like that one's still good. That one's still good. This one over here. It's a power supply line. That one's still good. This little guy here, this is a one microfarad. That tests about a one microfarad, so I don't think the capacitors are really at fault here. Uh, I've taken a look at a couple of other ones. And let me show you which ones I'm talking about here. If I can. Uh, the big fat purple one down there is okay. Uh, we've got another one. 
hiding in here between that wire mess thing. I still have to check that one. This little purple guy here to the side is okay. And I'm trying to see if there's an easier method to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, let me. There's this patch of couple here. 4.7 and the like there. Ooh, and those tantalums. The tantalums could be bad too. That's also part of the circuit. Uh, was it C4? 460 and C639. 639, 640. So we gotta check those. Tantalums are known to go bad at this generation. So I'm gonna need two hands for this. And then if nothing else, we'll start to clean up the board and do uh, work in that regard. But nominally, that's what we're looking at so far. All right, so I've checked over this board fairly thoroughly. Uh, I've touched up the solder on the other side. I've checked all of these resistors. These tantalums appear to be good. The uh, electrolytics appear to be good. I pulled them and checked them for leakage, but uh, none of them showed up as defective. They still have good ESR. Uh, I came around the back side, and I cleaned up a lot of that caustic glue and I ohmed out all the traces to the IC and they're still okay and uh, underneath that diode there there's a foil trace that runs and that still has good continuity so that's uh, that's where we're at so far uh, my suspicions still fall on this because I see these a lot in FM radios and they drift or they open or they cause problems there um, up here, this is probably unrelated, but I still need to kind of scrape away and clean that a little bit. I don't think there's any flyback drive voltages for the color section. I think that's a separate entity, but nah, I don't have a schematic, so I can't really check. So we're going to look at this a little bit more in depth, and then uh, if I can't figure it out, we'll power it up. And I think I'm going to play with that uh, frequency trimmer and see if we can't get the color to pop in. Because right now it just looks like it's running slow or fast. It's not locking in. And if I can't figure that out, uh, then we'll look at what frequency this is actually running at and the circuit's actually running at. And then we'll compare that with a data sheet if I can find it on this guy to see uh, what pins control the, the uh, oscillator. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So, let's see if I can dig up any more stuff, and if not, then uh, we'll just put it back on, back together and power it up and see if we can tweak it a bit. Alright, so it's all assembled enough for where I can run it. I've got the chassis kind of splayed out here so that I can uh, poke around. I touched up the board, cleaned up all the brown glue. Let's see, see if it does anything useful. Okay, let me move an antenna so that I actually get some form of reception. Surprisingly enough, in mid-city you don't get much. And let's go to a obviously colorized channel. Alright, so I've got nothing going on here. No color. Well, I've got rainbows. Alright. So let me grab an alignment tool and we'll tweak on that variable capacitor a little. Alright, so let's get this down in here. This is your frequency variable. And it does change things. I can definitely study the rainbows rather than keeping them rolling. Let's go back to our fine tuning again. And you can see them rolling away. I've at least, it's not locking in, but I've been at least able to stabilize the Excuse me just a second. I've at least been able to stabilize it. Let's get another 
tool in here. That one, nope, that one doesn't work. All my cool little alignment tools have gone missing. Let's try this one. See how if I turn it one way, I can make them roll. Turn it the other way, they roll the other way. And I can make them stop rolling. But still no color sync. So that makes me wonder if the oscillator itself is not working or there's something going wrong in this chip. Hard to tell. And they don't have any uh, weird adjustments for color lock or anything. And if I crank L color, yeah, it doesn't change much. When I turn the color all the way down doesn't change much either. The tin control moves the rainbows a little bit, but that's about all it does. So this needs further investigation. We need to look up what this chip is and see if we can find anything. Uh, I know all the capacitors didn't check bad. We could do all the old-fashioned freeze mist thing and see if uh, freezing any of the components changes anything. All right, so I'm going to squirt a little freeze mist on the uh, crystal here. No change there. A little bit on those two tantalums. No change there. No change there. And no change on the uh, video I see either. So I'm beginning to wonder if the IC is defective or we're simply missing a voltage, although uh, nominally all that power supply is checked out. So interesting. I'm going to look up that uh, EPC device. What is it? A, uh, 1371C and then we'll see if we can take some test measurements and see what's going on with it. Uh, this is definitely interesting. Check this out. Look at what's happening here. This is just after leaving it on for a little bit longer. Look at how I've got this uh, funny smear going on. Hang on, let's get something else going here. Look at that. Let's poke around in here. This is kind of trippy. Went from color bars to this. And tint and color controls have no no change whatsoever. Oh, there we go. So I can shift the colors with the tint control if I go all the way over. But we're obviously not processing our uh, color to video properly. Also, this is a new development. Uh, look at that. Yeah, let's go back to a blank picture again. Look at that noise. You got this big, thick, black bar there. I wonder if that's a power supply issue. Because we can at least shift the colors now. At least when I had black and white, I had a, a pretty looking... Uh, of course, I might be on auto color right now. That's 
weird thing. All right, so what happens if I change the frequency now? Yeah, nothing. Nothing really just stays the same. Totally bizarre. So I've got this big blue fringe here, and you can see all this color bleed off here. That's a trip. So at that point, it's kind of making me wonder if that IC is in fact bad, although we do have to double check our power supplies. I think I'm going to do that, and then uh, we can confirm whether it's uh, the chip or the power supply. So, looking at our B voltage, which is the 14 volts to the IC, I've got 14.12 volts there, and I've got very little to no hum. I've got 0 0.068 uh, worth a ripple, which is perfectly acceptable. Uh, uh, it's not focusing. There we go. Sorry about that. So yeah, it uh, it calms down 0 0.65 to whatever. Uh, not enough ripple to give a shit, really. And if we go back to DC uh, and we look at the video outputs for our red, green, and blue 3.3, 3.3, and 3.3. So it is driving the guns. Uh, 5 volts on the uh, uh, crystal here. Uh, not voltage coming off of the color control isn't really good enough. It's not there. Here's your supply voltage. Very acceptable ripple there. So I don't think it's the power supply. Uh, I think there's something else going wrong. I think this IC is defective because it's not processing the colors correctly. I mean it's processing colors but you can see they're smeared to the right. The blue shifted. Uh, turning the color up and down doesn't seem to do anything. Color on or off, it just seems to piss it off a little. And the, the tint and color can, the tint does something. You can see that the tint does something, but the color control, even when you completely turn it off, does not eliminate the color. So the uh, color killer circuit in here isn't working at all. So I think this IC is bad. Uh, I'm going to have to order one and pop it in and see if that fixes it. If so, great. Uh, but that seems to be the only thing that I can think of. It's just this whole all-in-one IC that does the video and color processing. And the video component of it looks good. Black and white looks great, but I can't turn the color off now. And this just popped up as a function of it being on. And you've got all these colors pushed and smeared to the right, so obviously things aren't mixing up very well. So I'm going to go ahead and order one of those ICs, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, the IC is not terribly expensive. Uh, I'm just going to have to tell the owner of this thing that that's we have to make a gamble on it. And if it works great, if not, then we got other issues. But the power supply to the chip is good. Uh, it is oscillating because I can stop, I, when it was color bars, I could stop them rolling, which means the frequency was adjustable. Um, I still, yeah, there's, there's really not much else going on other than that chip. And the colors flicker to different colors, as you can see every once in a while, so... I think it's video processor time. We'll get that ordered out and uh, pop it in when it gets here and see what happens. In the meantime, thanks for watching the video. More stuff to come.